Today we're going to be learning about forms. Forms are a powerful tool. They allow you to collect additional information you need and can be attached to any event. They are wide open. You can build logic into forms. Once you build a library of forms, you can copy them and attach them to any event. After this, you shouldn't need to build them from scratch anymore. If you build a camp registration form, for example, the next year's will probably be the same or similar. If it's similar, you can copy it and make changes as needed. Today, we are going to build forms and then attach them to an event. From the feature list, you'll go to Event Management, and then you'll come over here to the Forms tab. And in the Forms tab, you'll select New Form. Here is Create Form. After the form has been created, this will be known as Form Properties. For the beginning, you'll want a form title. This is the name of the form. The end user may see this depending on how you attach it to an event, so you want to make sure that the name is relevant to the event. For this example, we'll be using Picnic Day Form. For the description, this is optional, but note that this also may display to the end user as well. For item label position, this depends on your preference. You can either have them on the left or at the top. For display in form list, you can hide a form in the admin view or use the form as an admin. The end user will not see this if you select this option, so it allows you to add information as an administrator after registration. However, Please note that this is rarely used. Show form progress is an option. This shows the progress bar at the top of the form for the end user. Display in one page allows everything to display on one page regardless of how many pages you have. You will want to select this. In Double Knot, you can have as many pages on your form as you want. Some people like their forms organized by page. For example, you can have emergency contact info on one page, then click continue to go to allergy information on the next. This is also necessary and useful for conditional logic. To build logic, you need multiple pages because the system will look at the answers to questions on previous pages if you say yes to having allergies, for example, then you can have it show an additional question asking specifically what those allergies are. Other people like one page. This still uses conditional logic, but will pop up the question on the same page. Allow the responses of this survey to be sent in message slash e-card. You can ignore this in general. This is only used for adopting animals and wildlife organizations. Display the purchaser once. This is very important. If you have multiple items in the cart and it has the same forms attached to those items, for example, separate camping dates for a summer camp, if checked, then it will only display once to be filled out instead of per each item. From here, you can click Save. As you can see, we now have built out the shell of the form. And from here, we can begin creating the form questions by selecting Edit Form. From here, you can select from several of these item types. This allows you to build out the form. As you can see, we have all of these items available to build out the form. Some of the most popular form types to use are checkboxes. Checkboxes allows you to gather multiple answers to the same question. For example, a question like, please choose a sport, you can add answers like golfing, soccer, football, baseball. And you can specify which answers are checked by default by coming over here and selecting checked. You can also specify the minimum and maximum number of answers the user can choose 
down here in other options, as well as randomize the order in which the answers appear. And here you can also add the number labels if you would like to add number labels for each answer. As you can see here as well, you can also add a cost if applicable for these checkbox answers. Radio buttons allows the user to choose one answer from a list. These are ideal for questions with a small number of answers. For example, with radio buttons, you can ask the question, which event will you be attending? And you can have the answers here and select by default if you would like, as well as add a cost if applicable for any of these events. Down here in other options, you can also select allow other to give the user the option to allow other and add their own text. As with checkboxes, you can also allow a randomized answer order or number labels for all of the answer text here. Uh, drop down menu allows users to choose from multiple answers without taking up much room on the page like radio buttons. These are especially useful for questions with a large number of potential answers or pages with a large number of questions or other items. You can specify which answer is selected by default here and whether the answer is required here. You can also randomize the order in which the answers are displayed and add a number label for each answer as with the previous two examples. Single line text field is where users can be prompted to type their own response. You can specify here the answer format, whether you want to allow only numbers, integers, decimals, money, email, limited number of characters, or date. You can also specify the minimum value and the maximum value, as well as whether or not the answer is required. And here you can also specify a default value, which will be what is shown by default when the user sees the question. Multiple line text area allows you to gather free form text from the user. For example, if you would like comments regarding an event, or if you would like them to list allergies or medical conditions that are relevant to the person that is attending the event. Finally, we have variable cost display text. This allows your users to choose how many of an item they would like to purchase. For example, how many goodie bags? Goodie bags cost $5 each. You can add down here min and max values so that you can control how many goodie bags per registration can be purchased. When adding this item, it will look similar to this. On the customer's end, it will calculate how much they owe based on how many goodie bags, for example, they choose to purchase. Let us begin to create our picnic day form. We're going to start out with t-shirts. There are two options we can use to build this t-shirt question from. We can use drop down menu or radio buttons. They both work the same way, but as mentioned before, it looks slightly different. In this case, we're going to go ahead and choose drop down menu. For this example, we'll be using what is your t-shirt size? Here we have youth small, medium, and large, as well as adult small, medium, and large, and an option that says no thanks. We've got a cost of $15 for youth and $20 for the adult sizes. If the person chooses any of these for their option, they will be charged the $15 or the $20 respectively. Whereas if they choose no thanks, they will not be charged if they do not want a t-shirt. Down here, you do have the email restriction. This will allow their answers to show up on the confirmation email. This 
is useful for them to be able to see what size of t-shirt they ordered on their receipt. Now we're going to go ahead and add this item to our form. Now you can see the first item on the form. Now we're going to add a meal option. Here we're going to click add item to page and then choose radio buttons. For this question, we are going to ask that they please select a meal. In the subtext, we are going to add that lunch is included in the registration fee. This means that there will not be a cost applicable for this item. Here we have some of the answer text, and we're going to go ahead and make this answer required, as well as add a reporting label of meal. Now we are going to add logic to this form. If they select a salad, then we want to know what type of dressing they want to be included. To do that, we need to add a page. The way this works is that in order to build logic, the system needs to be able to look at previous pages. From here, you select Add Page. We're going to select here a drop-down menu. And here in the drop-down menu, we're going to go ahead and put dressing options as the question and we're going to have several different dressings as answers, as well as none if they don't want any dressing. For this question, we're also going to have it required, and the reporting label we're going to label as dressing. And then we're going to select Add Item. So now what we have is two pages. Page one is t-shirt size and lunch. Page two has dressing options. We only want dressing options to show up if they choose salad. We are going to build logic on this item to only display if they choose salad. We can do this via page conditions or item conditions. Page conditions means the entirety of this page is dependent on the logic. Item conditions mean that only this item is dependent. In this instance, we're going to go ahead and select Item Conditions. In the drop-down menu next to Question, we're going to select Please Select a Meal. Next to Operator, we're going to select Equals. And next to Value, we're going to select Salad. And then select Add Condition. If we click on Add Condition, then we can see under Item Conditions the logic we just created. We can also add more logic if we need to. If not, we can just hit save and continue. Now here, we can see the logic attached to the dressing option. And finally, we are going to add a question about allergies and special needs. We're going to select the multiple line text area in this instance. And the question is going to say, please list and describe any special needs or allergies. And then down here, we're going to abbreviate it to allergies slash SN for the reporting label. Then we'll click add item. As you can see, this form exists on two separate pages. But now that we're done creating this form, we're going to go ahead and click continue and then done. Once we have created our form, we're going to go ahead and attach it to our calendar activity example. In this instance, I have created Picnic at the Museum. And we're going to go ahead to this link to assign the form. And then we are going to select the form's name from this menu and click Assign. There are multiple ways to assign a form. In this instance, I'm going to make this one required. This will mean that they will have to fill out the form in order to complete the registration. Here, you can select the checkbox for before adding registrants. This means that the form will be the first thing that shows up when they go to register. In this case, this is useful for some waivers and some terms and conditions agreements. Then we have each registrant. If checked, this means that the form must be filled out by each registrant. As you can see, if we select this, then registrant type will show up. 
there are some forms that are unique to a type of registry. If you need to collect different information for adults and different information for youths, then you can assign firm forms per type of registrant. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and select all. Finally, display as registered attributes. We won't check this now, however, we will come back to this option later. Now we're going to select done. Now we're going to see what a registration looks like from the customer's point of view when a form is attached. Here's the registration for picnic at the museum. In this instance, we're going to select one adult and one youth. As you can see, we filled out one adult and one youth. And now you can see the forms attached to this activity. Remember that we assigned this form per registrant, so each person needs to fill this out. In the case of the adult, we're going to go ahead and forego the t-shirt. However, we will choose a salad for the lunch so that we can show the in-page question that uses the logic that we set up. Here, as you can see, the dressing options have shown up and we're gonna go ahead and select ranch. And remember, we set this to display on one page for it to show up if selected. If we didn't, then we would have to click continue to see the follow-up question for dressing options. In the case of the youth, we're going to go ahead and select a youth medium shirt, as well as a hot dog, and we're going to fill this out for peanut allergies in this open text field. As you can see with this green check, both of these forms have been completed and we can select continue. Now the customer can see their cart, check out and make their payment. As you can see here, youth medium was selected as a shirt and that $15 charge for the shirt has been added to the cart as well. Finally, we are going to build another form, attach it to the activity, and then take a look at it from the end user's point of view. We're going to go ahead to the Form tab and select New Form. For this form, we are going to label it Picnic Day Liability Waiver. And then we're going to select Edit Form. Please note that this type of form is often used for photo agreements, COVID waivers, agreeing to terms and conditions, etc. First, we're going to start out with header and select add item. Then we're going to add an HTML type to this form. This adds a rich text editor to the form. You can copy and paste it from a Word document, or you can type it out here directly if you prefer. In this case, I will just be using a lorem ipsum text generator to generate some text for us. So now they can go to the page and read the waiver. What we want to add now is a way to agree to the form. We're going to add an item to the page, and we're going to do this through the checkbox item. Here, we're going to add liability waiver agreement and add the answer text. I have read and agree to this waiver. To make them agree to this, I am going to use the maximum and minimum to choose. What this means is that they have to choose one of the answers, and as we are only providing one, they will have to choose this one. And for the reporting label, I'm just going to select waiver and then select add item. Now they have to come to this page and they have to agree to the waiver to move forward. Now we can select continue and done. Let's go back to our event and add this form and adjust the one that we first created. Back here at our event, we're going to select assign forms again and assign our picnic day liability waiver. Now we can see both of our forms attached. 
we're going to select this liability waiver as required. We don't need this signed per person, only the person making the reservation needs to sign it once. As for the picnic day form, we're going to select display as registered attributes. And I want you to notice what happens to the form when this is checked. And then we're gonna select done. Now let's test and look at the difference. The first thing you should notice is that the picnic day form is appearing on this page. As you can see, it gets rid of the forms page and puts the form under the registered info. If you have a small form, this is a good way to display it and improve the end user experience. As you can see, we filled out the form the same as before. However, all of the options for the picnic day form appear here on the first page. Now, if we select continue, we land on our liability waiver form because this form that we attached is required. Now, it is only going to show up once per registration. However, because this is required, they have to agree to the waiver to move forward. And now, as you can see, they can check out and make their payments. This concludes the forums webinar. We encourage you to watch all of the previous webinars we have available. Please, as always, test your forms before events are released to the public. If you have any questions, feel free to contact support and provide as much information as possible so that they can assist you. Thank you everyone for your time.